before I go, you know, there's this other game we've been thinking about for a long time. It's set in the Bioshock universe. Recently, we, you know, we found the right home for it. It's on this guy. Oh, sweet. That means I'll finally be able to play Bioshock on the go. Can't wait for this to come out soon. Ah, better late than never. Let's be honest. I think we all knew the Bioshock collection was going to make it to Switch at some point. The first game was even ported to iOS, and thankfully the Switch port looks way better. Plus, they were already on last generation consoles, so these games coming to the Nintendo Switch was a matter of when, not if. Sure enough, Publisher 2K brought this collection to the Switch, along with their other beloved franchises, Borderlands The Handsome Collection and XCOM 2. 2K were kind enough to send me a review code for this collection along with the other games in their 2K Beloved Franchises package, but I gave those other two games to my writers over on NukeTheFridge.com, so check out that website for reviews on those games when they go up. Now the Bioshock trilogy is one of the greatest gaming trilogies out there, but before I go over each game individually, I want to talk about how they look and run on Switch and if it's the best place for you to play them. Even though the Bioshock trilogy came out during the Xbox 360 and PS3 days, the Switch actually receives the remastered versions of these games also released on Xbox One and PS4. I say that because you might not think these are remasters at first glance, but they do contain some visual differences that you wouldn't notice right away until you watched a side-by-side -side comparison. Of course, the biggest improvement these remasters made was the frame rate, upgraded to 60 frames per second. The Switch ports of these games had to settle for 30 FPS, but it's understandable given that the Switch is, you know, a handheld. I've only had one instance in Infinite where the frame rate was choppy, but I never had anything like that happen again. So even though the games don't look the best on Switch, you're still getting the quintessential Bioshock experience. The story is the same, the atmosphere is the same, even the gameplay is still great. But there's no gyro controls. Where's my gyro? However, we still need to address the big daddy in the room, or the two big daddies, one of which is the price tag. $50 for this collection, or $20 digitally for each. $50 for these three games seems like a good deal, but like other Switch ports, this has the problem of being way cheaper on other platforms, going for as little as $20 new physically. This makes the Switch version of the collection a much harder sell for people who already own other consoles or a PC. Another fair warning though, if you buy this collection digitally, it'll be 31GB total and require a microSD card. Buying it physically will reduce the file sizes, but downloads will still be required. That said, the Switch has the benefit of being portable, and if you're the type of person who almost exclusively plays games on the go or only owns a Switch, this is a collection definitely worth picking up, especially if it's on sale by the time you're watching this. The Bioshock Collection isn't nearly as mind-blowing of a port as The Witcher 3, but taking aside the Switch port, the Bioshock games are some of the greatest games ever conceived by human hands, and no matter what platform you play them on, you're in for a hell of a time. Starting with the first Bioshock, you play as a guy named Jack, who finds himself in the underwater city of Rapture after a plane crash in 1960. What seems like a utopia turns out to be far more sinister, as the city's been overrun by splicers, people who've lost their humanity and have had their genetic makeup extremely altered by a compound called Adam. This allows the enemies and yourself to use plasmids, which give you abilities like electrocution, telekinesis, and some good old fashioned flamethrowing. These plasmids are used to help solve puzzles and assist you in combat, where you'll also be equipped with a variety of firearms to use against splicers and big daddies. Big daddies are monstrous creatures that protect little sisters, who are little girls infused with Adam. If you want to get their Adam to upgrade your plasmids, you can do so by healing them or killing them, the latter of which will give you more Adam. I'm a big softie, so I chose to save them every time. Thank you. I should have killed them. What you decide to do to the little sisters will affect how the game ends. I won't go into any spoilers, but the story in Bioshock is wild. I already knew everything about the story when I first played the game, so it unfortunately didn't have that much of an impact on me. If you're going to play this game for the first time, I urge you to stay away from spoilers, which shouldn't be too hard since the game is already 13 years old. 
Now let's move on to Bioshock 2, which, in my opinion, is the weakest entry in the trilogy. It's still a really good game, but it lacks the impactful story of the first, and it has some rather annoying features. In this one, you play as a big daddy named Delta, who was killed in 1958 before the events of the first game. He then wakes up ten years later and goes on a quest to rescue his now grown-up little sister, Eleanor. For all the faults this game has, it makes one giant improvement. You can now use guns and plasmids at the same time. I'm honestly surprised they didn't go back and put this in the first game, because it just makes life so much easier. And while you still can harvest or rescue little sisters for Adam, this gives you the option to adopt one and gain more Adam in the process. It makes the whole ordeal longer, but more rewarding. Other than that, it's a lot more of Bioshock 1, which is never a bad thing, though the story in this sequel fails to be as exciting. It's still worth a playthrough though, as it expands upon Rapture's backstory, and it improves upon the gameplay elements of 1. But, I hate the big sisters. I know some people love them because they're a challenge, but when you're low on money and ammo, they're just annoying as shit, and I hate them. Finally, we have Bioshock Infinite, and wow, this game is... Wow. I'm pretty sure everything I was supposed to feel about playing Bioshock for the first time, I felt playing this for the first time. Rather than being set in Rapture, Infinite takes us to the skies within the floating city of Columbia in 1912. Playing as a private investigator named Booker DeWitt, you're tasked with finding a girl named Elizabeth and taking her out of the city. Which of course is not a simple task. Infinite feels more like an action shooter in comparison to the last two, which were a bit slower in pacing. But the soul of a Bioshock game is still intact, with the game rewarding you for exploring off the beaten path. I knew when I first saw that quartet singing God Only Knows, that this game was truly something special. God only knows what I'd be without you. Between all the action and set pieces, Bioshock Infinite lets you truly get lost in this bright, beautiful, and yet sinister world, all the while introducing you to characters you just can't help but be invested in. Now the story itself might be more controversial since it goes way off the rails, but I love how they committed to that insanity. That and the game is just really fun to play. The plasmids you get, now called Vigors, are way more powerful and badass in this game, and there is more weapon variety than ever before, even if you can only equip two guns at a time. What's really satisfying though is when you jump on the skylines and deliver some death from above. I could go on all day about how great Bioshock Infinite is, but for now, I'll just say that it is a must-play for any fans of action-adventure and or shooter games. Plus, with this pack, you get all the DLC, including Burial at Sea Episodes 1 and 2, which are set in Rapture. I love how these expanded the story, but I kind of don't love how Episode 2 is purely a stealth game. Either way, you should play these when you're done with Infinite. So is the Bioshock collection for the Nintendo Switch worth it? Well, if you're itching to play these games on the go, or if you only own a Switch, I say yes. But if you do own any of the other platforms like a PS4, Xbox One, or PC, I'd recommend checking them out on those platforms first, as they are cheaper and they look better. But, like I said, if you're dying to play them on the Switch, get them on the Switch. You won't regret it. Man, playing these games for this video just really made me fall in love with Bioshock all over again. I truly forgot how amazing these games are. No matter what platform you play the Bioshock collection on, I promise you, you'll be in for an unforgettable experience. Even if the Switch versions don't have gyro controls. Am I not supposed to have what I want? Hey everyone, thank you so much for watching this episode here on Ferris Wheel Pro. If you liked it, be sure to give it a thumbs up and subscribe to know when I upload another one. A special thanks goes to my Patreon supporters including Justice to Free, Stephanie Ferris, and Smash JT. But until the next one, this has been Ferris Wheel Pro, and I will see you all on the next ride.